I'm talking to Nora Brimfield in Yatton. Um, Nora, tell us um, how you came to be connected with, uh, with Bristol cars, Bristol Air Engines, Bristol Aeroplanes. My husband was Mervyn Broomfield and he is the one who was ex extremely interested in the 220, having worked on it and when he learned it was going to be scrapped he was horrified and, as I say, was determined to rescue it. And did rescue it? Well, indeed, yes. Yes. Or well, some of it. Yes. <laughs> okay. the, well, the vital bits. Yes, yes. yes. Well, my husband um, worked there. It was something he'd always wanted to do, work with cars. Yes. And um, he um, happened to come. He was working for um, Supermarine at uh, Hursley, Hursley Park. Because Supermarine at uh, Hursley Park. Where's Hursley Park? Um, near Southampton. Right. And, right. Yes. As, and uh, he, um, they went on an outing up to BAC to look at the aeroplane division. Yes. But Marvin spotted there was this car division. Right. And he got hold of someone and he said, this is where I really want to work. So, so they said, um, well, finish um, taking your, I think it was HNC, that's yes. what he was doing, and then write to us and we'll probably be able to find you something, which was what happened. So this yes. was early 50s? Um, yes, we were married in 1955. Yes. So... Um, Yes, so this would have been about 56. Mm. Yes, that's right. It was, it was Christmas of 56, and he started 1st January 57, it would have been then, yes. So you moved up from Southampton. And we moved from Southampton, yes. To, to Littlestoke. And not immediately. We, we moved into a, a flat in, in, in Bristol, right. and then um, we, um, when we were expecting our first child, we um, bought this house at Littlestoke. And what was his background, and what was his actual job with Bristol Cars? Well, I think he, he was employed as a design en engineer. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so, was was he do so was he drawing blueprints? Was he... He, he, was, he was working on a drawing board, yes. certainly, yes. yes. Um, and then he came to be interested in this prototype, the 220, which... Exactly, which yes. So he, he was very... Excited about that because, of course, it was going to be something quite new and um, groundbreaking and so on. And I guess, I suppose, he'd been working on that. Oh, well, yes. And uh, as I say, I'm, I'm sure when they started um, to test drive it around the airfield, um, he had a go. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but what happened then? Well, unfortunately, um, well, soon after he started work there, he, he discovered that Bristol cars were going it alone, and not yes. actually integrated with BAC. Yes. And after a while, they found that you know this just wasn't working out very well, and mm. they would um, have to make some redundancies. Yes. Yes. So uh, it was um, you know there was you know it was, it was quite a, a worrying thing because of course he hadn't been working there all that long. No. But. Um, the union um, stood up for the men concerned, and yes. um, what happened was a, a group of them, and this must have been under Eric Ager, and um, they said they would see if they could find some subcontract work, which they could be doing for the time being, and hopefully right. uh, Bristol Cars would be able to re-employ them, Have them back, again. Yes. Yes. And um, this was how they got into work in, in the nuclear field. They were making cables to, which would, um, could be used in a nuclear reactor. Right. right. And um, they managed to work up um, you know, quite a little um, sideline yes. With, yes. with that. And, uh, but, as I say, things seemed to go from bad to worse, unfortunately, with Bristol cars. And, yes. Uh, the, um, of course, the new engine which they were testing yes. um, failed on the test bed just before it had reached the number of um, hours or it was supposed to be tested for. Sorry. Right, right. And um, so that was that. But they said, well, you know, that's it. We've, the 220 will be scrapped. Yes. And of course, Mervyn was absolutely horrified. Yes. 
he was really watching this and, as I say, hoping it was all going to go into production and so on. And as I say, they'd all be going back and working on it and so on. But um, yes. no. So uh, uh, he said, well, you know, what is going to happen to the prototype? Oh, well, we we'll have to scrap it. Oh, you can't do that. Well, you know, well, what else do we do with it? We said, I'll buy it. Right. Well, I don't think they were expecting that. No. no. <laughs> and um, it, 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 was, it was a difficult one in a way. I think they, yes. the, they, they didn't know quite, you know, where it, it, it might go from there. So they had to make absolutely certain that it was merely a chassis that he bought, not a car, because yes. it, already, it had no engine. Yes. So um, the roof was removed as well. And under those conditions, we, um, well, I presume we must have towed it from Filton to our house at Little Soap, but as I say, I wasn't very far. Yes. And, uh, you know, I think my heart sank, really, when I saw it. I thought, how are we ever going to make anything of it? Because, you know, we had no money. <laughs> and at the time, you also, you also, you already had your family. We had a, we had a, had a growing family, you see, yes. that's right. I think you had four children. We, we had, uh, as I say, three when we left the Little Stoke and another yes. soon after we got here. So, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, so it, you, you, had it, you had it in your garage at Little Stoke. That's right. And uh, then, as I say, the, um, it seemed to be working out well, the um, transfer of the work down to Bristol Aerojet. And, yes. um, we did, and they, the firm said, well, they would pay for relocation expenses. So right. we, we decided... It was a very long haul to and fro um, from uh, Little Stoke down to Banwell. You see, because you had to go through Bristol. I mean, there yes, in those weren't, days. weren't motorways. I mean, it was before. You have to go. That. The, have to go over the suspension bridge. No, no, no. You, I think. Oh. I, th I, th I think you went, went, went through the centre of Bristol. Oh. I'm not, not, I'm yeah. not sure. But whichever way you went, it yes. was, it was, yes. it, it was. We were doing that for about twelve months, and it was. Mm. Really, yeah. So you came, you so came down. We came down, and um, we f found this house in Yatton, and um, we couldn't move in immediately. The people who were selling it were waiting for a bungalow to be built, and they said they couldn't move out until yes. their bungalow was built. So we went into lodgings with a friend we happened to have in who lived at Locking, actually, so that, yes. that was reasonably convenient. And I remember now that one of the conditions of us moving out was almost immediately, because the lady concerned was expecting a baby, yes. uh, was that w w they, we left the contents of the garage untouched and we would remove that as soon as we had our house here. Right. So this is what happened, you see, the following spring. So the car was, the Bristol was transferred down here. It came, it came. How did it get here? Well, I, I'm practically certain it was put on a railway truck and then towed from Yatton Station. Right, yes. up, the, up the high street. <laughs> yes, oh yes, well, um, <laughs> sort of thing Mervyn would do, yes. But you weren't... Um, I like, wasn't you, in, involved you weren't in that. You weren't involved. Uh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> but anyway, it... it went in the garage and there we are and my husband had a few goes at doing various things to it. He, he took the big leather seats out and they went up into our loft yes, so that he could yes. get at the um, chassis and the suspension and so on. And His idea was if, if he could manage to get hold of a, an engine which he could fit in yes. just to sort of get everything moving again. But um, of course it had had a Jaguar engine before. And, that was a bit easier said than done. Right, <laughs> right, right. So, would it, do you were you aware that it had a Jaguar engine, or uh, that was what it had had? I understood. Right. Yes. Right. When they'd been road testing it. Yes. Yeah, so that. that so it, it, it really needed something rather rather powerful. Yes. And rather expensive. Well, exactly. And do you remember what he paid for it in those days? Sixty pounds. And that would have been the late fifties, possibly yes. fifty. Fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Yes, like yes. That. So that would have been more than a month's 
It was a lot Sorry. of money. It was a lot of money. Yes. I'm trying to. I'm, I, I'm trying to, re to remember. Um. Yes, I can remember our excitement when it reached a hundred pounds a month. I think that might have been when we were at the Little Stove, perhaps. Yes. But I mean, it was a it was a big chunk with um, well, my, when, when you're paying a mortgage yes. and the, the my pocket money was two and sixpence mm, in those days. Yes, yes, indeed. And the Mars bar, I think, was fourpence halfpenny, if I remember rightly. So. Sixty pounds was quite a quite a big chunk then. It, it was, yes. Um, but then you kept it, and he worked yep. on it. Yes. And he and planned to make it, make a project of it. Oh, uh, in, indeed, yeah. yes. And he, you kept it until he sadly died. Yes, in, yes. in a, in a works accident. That's true. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so what happened to it after that? Well. Of of course, I, you know, I really didn't know what to do. I, I felt, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't keep it. There was nothing yes. I could do with it. None of my family were old enough to do anything with it, even if they, they wanted to. And uh, so, this so I, I, I got in touch with um, someone at Bristol Cars and said, you know, w would they take it back? And yes. I, I think they were sorry for me and, you know, saw what dilemma I was in yes. and said that they would, but um, there was no discussion of what might happen to it. I thought, well, it went back there. And yes. I, I'd done my best. Yes, 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 yes. What year was this? Well, this would have, Mervyn died in um, 1976, so this would have been sometime during 1976. Yes, yes, yes. Um, do, you, do you remember who you might have spoken to when you called them up? Well, Say it might have been Dennis Sevier because we had been in touch with him recently because he'd asked for photos of the two hundred and twenty for some yes he was project he was working he on was yes. presenting a talk at the time I think to yes the, to the owners club and mm. uh, and, and he, he 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 presented some material there mm. so um, he was obviously very well informed and involved that's right um, and we're all still trying to find out what happened next. And nobody, yes. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. No, as I say, I, I never made any inquiries. I felt I'd, I'd rather not know. To yes, be yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> so there we are. We've got here some pictures of the engines oh, yes. and the car uh -huh. and so on that you've kindly you've kindly showed us. Yes. What do you what do you remember Mervyn saying about it about the suspension and the, the construction and so on? Well, what stuck in my mind was that it had this um, completely new rubber suspension which yes. struck me as an extremely odd thing but um he was very enthusiastic about it and quite sure you know it would uh, that was be very suitable that yeah it was designed by alex moulton who's still still around and he, oh, right. he makes bicycles now oh yes yes the i've same, heard the name certainly same yes suspension so. right well it obviously was a good idea yes but, uh, he was very successful in the 60s and he's the firm's mm, the company's yes. still going uh, right yeah so that's thing. interesting mm. Um, and you, 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 any other, is there anything else we can say about these pictures? I, mm -hmm. They're all rather technical, aren't they? Oh, well, that's right. I mean, all I remember it was, it, is it was absolutely huge, that even in our big yes. garage we had to um, um, cut off the very last rear bit yes. in order to, to get the doors to shut. Right, and, uh, you had to take the bumper off or something. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's yes, right. Yes. At the, at the, Yes, and I mean, you know, the wheels and the tyres were huge and the seats, these huge leather seats. So yes, yes. Very comfortable, but, um, as I say, quite enormous. Yes. <laughs> um, well, we can see the scale of it from the chassis here. And oh, it's, I see, it's, yes, uh, yes. It's quite different, quite different from the, the then and indeed current, current Bristol cars. Mm. So, uh, yes. This was a huge new departure for them at yeah. the time. Exactly, yes. And, um, uh, people are very excited about it now, and I can see how excited Mervyn must have been about it then. Oh, oh he was indeed, uh, yes. Even yes. nowadays it would be a radical, I a, a yes, radical, it, a radical I, design. I see, yes. By today's standards, let alone uh, really, yes. 50, yes. 55 years ago. Mm, yes. How time, how time flies. It does indeed, yes. Well, thank, you, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.